The ingenious program is designed under the guidance of Paramahamsa Nityananda. The ingenious program is a vaccination for higher intelligence creating the space of possibilities. The physiological and psychological chemistry of the child changes, setting them up for peak performance in health, academics, communication and leadership skills. The initiation received from the incarnation revives their brain enabling them to the peak of possibilities. You will see amazing differences in your child after they attend the ingenious program. You will be pleasantly surprised and ask, is this the same child? In just 21 days, your child is a new being expressing the highest possibilities and intelligence dropping all violence and anger. The enormous potential inside them begins to manifest externally in all activities they do and that is when parents start seeing the hidden talents of their children expressing as intelligence in its various forms. You will see the difference in health in case of sick children and also be surprised with the results of special needs children creating a new avenue for them towards an improved lifestyle. The ingenious program is a leadership program that is a must for every child to move into the new civilization. For the first time, introducing you to you as a new possibility of tomorrow. His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda is a world-renowned teacher in the science of living enlightenment. As the spiritual head of the oldest apex body of Hinduism, he is revered as a living incarnation of superconsciousness by millions worldwide. His morning satsangs are viewed live in over 30 countries every day on television and video conferencing. Nityananda Vidya Pita is an expression of Nityananda's vision to mold the new generation into responsible, high achievers who represent the best of both Vedic wisdom and contemporary education. Mahant Maharishi Nitya Advaitananda, ordained disciple of Paramahamsa Nityananda, is directly guided into the Vedic education by him. This parenting session is conducted by Mahant Maharishi Nitya Advaitananda. Mahant Maharishi Nitya Advaitananda is the head of the Nityananda Vidya Pita. She is currently guiding several international, urban and local schools and weekend schools around the world. As an educationist with over 10 years of childcare related experience, she has been working in the field of child development and psychology, enriching thousands of children, parents and teachers from all over the world. Ma Advait frequently conducts training in the areas of early childhood growth and development, child psychology, parental psychology, syllabus design, quantum memory activation, multiple intelligence learning techniques, school administration and much more. Prior to taking up the lifestyle of enriching lives through education, she was a talented IT professional working with Fortune 500 company Cognizant for over 10 years of which 8 years were in the US where she specialized in project and technical management roles for various global 500 companies. She quit her lucrative IT career and became an entrepreneur by starting an international school in Chennai. She holds a Bachelor of Computer Science Engineering, Bachelor and Master's degree in Education and is still pursuing her education by doing a Master's degree in Psychology. Okay, madam. Okay, let's Margaret again go ahead. See, the whole parenting, we are going to talk about why we are doing, what is the purpose behind the whole parenting. See, there is a different world that exists beyond the world that we know of adults and nobody has explored it and nobody has gone through that it's like adults are like a forest and also a crazy forest and if you go inside the adult there is a child of every adult and that's like a lagoon where you have beautiful falls and birds and everything is looking so beautiful and every one of us has that already inside us and the children are right there. They don't have a forest built around them. That's all. We slowly and slowly moved away from that lagoon to the forest area. 
then we are so lost that we don't know what life is presenting to us so that's exactly where we are and where they are to give you a visual idea but madvik want to tell you like uh, the whole space that we call adults is only from that child it can form right from a child only all of us grew into where we are and when we grew up the only problem is we carried some of the things from rocks and stones and everything in our backpack and then we came to the place where we are right now if we just drop that bag we are going to be in the same space we are going to disappear from this space and go into the space of a child but we love those rocks and we think that is the most precious things to carry those rocks and carry it all over our body so that is why each session what madhvik is going to do is this is not something you're going to do as like 3 hours course and it's going to be that's it see we go to school at the age of 3 or 4 and study the same maths physics chemistry science social all those subjects english you including the language that's the funniest part we study even the language for 12 to 15 years depending on what we have taken up minimum and we don't use anything in our work but some foundation is given is the belief that everybody carries that foundation is uh, something we think that is required for our next space that we need to occupy but swami was very clear when he was talking to gurukul kids that the whole thing is just a myth we do not use any of the history component in our life nor we use the cost price selling price and all those things in our uh, day to day life and whatever we learn we still have to go to the bank and understand their rules and regulation it's like a new class that we need to take for having an account and dealing with money and all that nothing related to what we have learned the only thing we use is the numbers and letters and reading language and all that apart from that swami is very clear we waste all our energy and time in learning something that is not going to be useful for us so okay madhvik was saying this only the swami was very clearly saying how this education system thinking is giving the foundation actually does nothing to do with foundation it doesn't teach us what we need to learn nor give us the whole dimension of what we would be using in our life in day to day practical life we will not be using any of those which has been thought it's very wonderful they have a system in place but this system was designed when we have a industrial age when they had no idea about the education system they just started a revolution or age of calling industrial age and then they plugged in the education system which they made like boxes and they put the kids in the boxes called classes by age and then they started teaching the um, they started with all these basic things and they added on things which are related and unrelated without having a structure to it that's why swami is very upset about the education system itself as a whole if something is useful and i'm going to spend 12 years of my life i should be a professional in that i should be you know extraordinary in that but i spent 12 years of my life and finally land up using only the numbers and letters nothing more than that if a teacher was nice um, some nice uh, games and values to it that's all but the whole education system completely gives us an idea that we take the books we learn it and we just uh, throw the answer and then we get a paper called degree and that is going to save our life so what swami why madhvik is telling all this is why swami ji has designed gurukul completely different it's so different that people don't understand how it is different but same uh, looks very similar to the 
regular schools. In terms of learning, the regular school math, physics, chemistry is same, but how we teach these kids is completely different. And how these kids learn is also completely different. That is where the main difference is not in the way we teach. That is a outer world difference. That we use something called celebration learning and we use something called, no, uh, some, we call it celebration learning where we teach them through lots of games, lots of uh, dance, music. We use everything to teach. That is the outer world way of teaching the kids or the same subject that you all went through. But there is an inner world changes which is the way they learn things. They learn their things from a space of call completion. From the space they were before and they are there and we are all supposed to be in that space. Like how Swamiji was telling today inner world and outer world is in complete sync. What they are, who they are is the space of a child. They do not be one inside and be something else outside. They don't have the duality or the hypocrisy that we all carry. The extra additional things that uh, we all carry comes as a big baggage that we miss the whole life. So that becomes a huge uh, extra baggage for us. The kids are able to maintain the same space and in Gurukulam what we do is we make sure they do not get out of that space of learning till they are about 14 years. We are, Swamiji is very particular about that, very, very, very particular about that. That is the whole space he is holding till 14 years for some extraordinary intelligence to explode in that space. See, unless you understand the space, you will not know what is the difference between a Gurukul kid and the other kid. They all look the same, they are very naughty and Gurukul kids are more naughty. They do everything topsy-turvy and uh, everybody is wondering, what these kids are so naughty and Swami is saying, great, he is amazing kid. Oh, they can be like this, they can be like little Buddha. You will be so amazed. So we need to move to the space of that Buddha instead of asking the Buddha to come to our space which is all chaos and confusion. Like we are the outer world of the humanity and the children are the inner world of the humanity. We are the two sides of the same coin. The humanity has, the social society has the inner world also which is the children part. And we are the outer world part which is the adult part of it. And whenever we talk to them, what do we do? We say, why are you doing this? How are you doing this? This is not correct. We speak only shout, shout, shout from our side. We never thought we can open the door, go into their space, sit down and see. Wow, there is a Buddha there, sitting there so beautifully and so nicely and listening to everything we are saying. And they are listening more clearly. They have the, the listening which even we don't have. So that is the whole space we are going to talk about and that is where Madhvik want to take you all. And it doesn't happen over like one call. This is a science Swamiji has been teaching us past six years. And we are still learning and still learning and still learning till we get there to the space. We just have some glimpse of that space when the children listen. But we don't get completely into that space. That is where the whole thing and if you really understand and if you really go through a series of course, then you will get real points. You will really understand, oh, we have to step down and go into their room and sit with them and then talk to them. Then they do anything for you. Forget the things you are talking about making them eat. They can eat through the ears. They can smell and they can taste the sound. They can do things much, much beyond. All you need to do is walk to their space and then give them that information in their space.
All we do is sit from our space and shout, 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 shout. Hey, why are you doing this? I didn't tell you to do this. This is not correct. This is out of integrity. Whatever you say from the space that you are, it's not going to work. And you have to be in the space of life happening even as an adult. But as a child, you need to really get down to a space where they happen. And which is completely different from the adult space. See, we are all uh, following Swamiji's uh, four tattvas and Swami says, you have to happen in the where life happens. Then only you will understand and the listening happens there. But if you are not happening where, where life is happening, you will not get what they are speaking. But this is one more level, not just the life happening, the life happening in the space of a child, a vulnerable child whose extraordinary intelligence it's just like a real happening for them. For example, what a child thinks. She likes pink. She will see everything as pink and she'll choose everything as pink and the reality is pink. If you ask her between why she chose pink, she chose pink because she chose pink, that's all. She's very clear about her likes and dislikes as it is. We choose things because we want it that way. I choose something because I want it that way. But the kid chooses the life as reality, as creating the reality. So if they are, as Swami says, they are able to create reality constantly. So just imagine their intelligence, where they are coming from. That's why when they speak to us, they are so pure. And the whole happening is so amazing, sometimes even transforms us. I mean, this guy usually is naughty and doesn't talk properly, doesn't eat properly, whatever complaint we have, suddenly is able to give me a tattva from somewhere and which is like mind-boggling. How does he do? The reason is they are living in that space as they are, but we keep pulling them out of their space and say, Come on, this is the adult space. Now you have to learn how to live in this space. So we keep pulling them, pulling them, pulling them, dragging them and then they are so upset. Obviously, the minute you drag them here, they don't feel they are even respected as who they are. So the whole dragging process irritates them so much, they started showing that in their eating, in their sleeping, in their getting up, in every way possible. Because the words we occur to them is from only our space. We will not learn where we should go. We will not learn how to take care of them. But they should listen to us completely. See, that is where the parenting becomes a big flaw, become a big error. And then we say they don't listen. Swami is very clear, a child even as a one-year-old, a two-year-old, if you tell them, they listen. And how it happens, a three-year-old or a one-year-old or a fifteen-year-old, if you tell them, this is the, you don't have milk for yourself, we are all going to share the milk. Today, there is nothing for you. If you tell that, usually what will the kids do? How dare you do this? And they will scream at us, right? If you have ice cream and you all eat the ice cream and don't give it to the kid, they'll throw a tantrum, they'll create a... No, they'll scream, they'll cry. Try doing this to a kid. Buy four nice best ice cream your child likes. And you eat it and you give it to your friends. What will happen? They will cry and throw a tantrum, hit each other, probably grab ice cream from you and eat it off also. All that they will do Accept, accept what you are going to give them. But if you groom them in the space of a child, they'll simply say, yes, mommy, I completely understand. You and your friends can have ice cream. I'll find some other day where I, we can share the ice cream with you. You will be zapped. That kid can understand the space. Mommy is giving an extreme space. But this is a possibility of a child because they are so pure, they can flex themselves, their muscles and the mind is so beautiful, they just can flex to the extreme. 
and say anything is a possibility for them we are not able to do only we will cry and we will shout technically if you see we are the people who will be shouting at the kid you don't even know how to eat an ice cream your dress is dirty by now you spill the ice cream i paid for the ice cream all the other co- adult conversation will come out but when in the child space it will be so pure they will even say it's okay we don't need an ice cream to be happy you all eat and i enjoy with you that's all as simple as that everybody shares i'm happy a real space of a child is that because they enjoy more when sharing happens not when eating happens the adults only when they eat only they are more happy but the child is more happy when they share things that is more important for them is keeping the inner space so pure and they would do anything for that but we have to groom them like that what we are teaching the kids is just the opposite telling life you should not be there where life happens you should only listen to all the things which i tell you see we give just the opposite instruction of what we should say if you're not getting anything just stop mad with okay if you have a question also stop mad with if you don't understand that the child has to understand the space that you need to create for them you will always be having a fight with them for even the simple thing as wearing a dress or buying a dress you can see how you are with simple things with a child don't have to get to very difficult thing of uh, putting them in a new school or changing the school or something big or them taking a course a new course any any level i am not with the talking as old as a 15 year old or as young as a 2 year old if you are very clear and you understand the space they just listen they just listen to life and just accept life as it is happening that is the space we need to create if we are not in that space we are not doing parenting we are only torturing them and also making them like no demons like one of us we are really creating a wrong space and giving them a wrong idea about who they are and what their possibility is they we are shutting all their doors doors that's why swami says you are bringing down the child i will show you how i bring up a child why he says this is we never never understand that space we are always in the space of an adult and always trying to teach them from that space of an adult that is where the whole problem comes we never understand that one day we were a child one mom asked me okay you telling you are telling all this high space and all that i don't understand tell me practically now my child is not eating he doesn't want to eat how do i go practically to a space of a child to uh, make him eat i beg them i told them please i said i'll play with him nothing he understands he says i don't want to eat now how do i go to that space that you're talking about so marvik said all the thing he was that boy was actually um, having a car in his hand okay and he was uh, crying that he doesn't want to eat all marvik said to them was ma just ask him to drive the car to you and take the food and go what he will do just see what he will do immediately immediately that kid immediately got up and stopped crying and said mama here the car has come to eat the food it's so amazing how the kid understands even before the mother even understood practically the mother told here is the food for the car and immediately he took the car and then he opened his mouth the food went to him and the car drew back this might not be logical or a space which we understand but the children are there it's completely different space where they are so you need to get down every time to that space and each level is different for example uh, 
up to seven years, they are really in the non-logical space. They do not have an idea about what we call as logical. Logical itself is inauthenticity, is what Swami says. All the logical part of the brain is the 10 percent that we use. So we don't understand and we try to use this 10 percent for all the things we do. They just believe what happens is what they are. They are in the presence. So when they are in that space, they only know about the car right there because he's holding a car, he knows his whole world is about the car. It is not about the food. So when you talk about the car, it just connects like that for them. That when you are talking about some food, your health will get spoiled and you don't eat like this, curse him, shout at him, beg him, oh please, I fall at your feet, please eat. Still it doesn't make sense to him. He's thinking, what is wrong with you? Why would you fall at my feet for me holding a car? That's what goes on in his head. Why is this mommy talking like uh, falling at my feet? Does she want this car? He doesn't understand or get you at all. He is like with the space of a car. You are talking about food. So if that communication were to happen, then there is no meaning. Like you are talking about uh, something and he is talking about something. That is the conversation most of the time happens. That is the reason why none of the kids listen to you when you say something. Because you, you have made it as a habit. You say something, they will say something. And nor the, you have listening, nor of course they are in the space of where they are. Smaller kids. And at least little bigger kids, they want to be in that space and they knowingly they will answer to you. They are very intelligent. They know very well. We will sit back and relax. This mom is going to drive me crazy now. She has come with some new idea. I am not interested. First, the sight of you, they closed on. Because seven years, you taught them that only. First seven years, what you did was, and as young as a baby, there is some beautiful sharing by Dr. Krishna. His friend, uh, mom, had trained this baby by just listening, whenever the baby is moving and uh, you know, showing any signs, she will even take them, take the baby, a uh, few months, three months baby to bathroom. Or if uh, the baby starts moving and all, putting the hand uh, in the mouth and all, she will immediately try to feed them. So by doing, listening, listening to the baby as young as a baby, the mother understood the baby without crying. And Dr. Krishna was sharing the baby never cried the number of months that he stayed in their house. Never cried. Because it knew it, it can show signs and then it can express the what it requires without the crying. It's so bad that first we teach the kid to make something in our world even as old as a baby you cry then only you, we will give you milk. I am very clear. We will change the diaper or give you milk only if you cry and call us. On call duty only we are here. We are not going to parent you by listening to you and all. That is too much to ask. First we are very clear about even as a baby. That is where we start. Even as a baby they don't have to cry. But slowly and slowly we teach them that is the way we are and that is a space we need to express. This uh, engineer's kids uh, who have come, there is a two and a half year old. And whenever he sleeps, he cries. So Madhvet went and asked him, why do you have to cry for going to sleep? He just smiles at me and then settles down. But again he cries when he has to go to sleep. Then again I tell him, See, you don't have to cry. I will still put you in on my lap and you can still sleep. He's so confused because his mom has never let him to sleep without crying. And mom has always thought that crying is part of his sleep. No, he is very clear. There is no tear, tear from his eyes. Nothing, no tension, nothing. He just cries because he thinks crying is part of sleep. So Marvaj is continuously teaching him, he has stopped crying 50% now, nearly I would say 75%, otherwise he will cry till that 
minute he goes to sleep he'll be crying for an hour and he gets so tired that he'll fall into sleep but really we can teach the kid where they are and really it works the parenting is one thing is very sensitive so marvin wants to put it very slowly and very clearly because it is like parenting for most of us is like taking part of one of our part of body okay because we gave birth it belongs to us and the human psychology starts from that space but we avoid understanding that it is a different being it is not part of us but saying that everybody gets furious how can you say that it is not part of me every minute and every breath i have only thought about my kid the problem is that only you only thought about kid you are not in the space of a child if you are in the space of a child you both will be so amazing that you know the kid will co- be able to converse with you in this in completely different way mama i just smelled that uh, tune ma you want to know what is the tune you will be amazed what words they are coming out with they can smell tune they can taste the tune they can do anything there are possibility happening there if the kids are a possibility happening there then we are parenting swami says that is called parenting that he is so scared to tell about parents because everything becomes sensitive and they run off that unless you guys understand the world understand swami ji it will be very difficult for him to even go forward but this is very sensitive but the problem is we never uh, went through classes or training nothing we just gave birth <laughs> that is the biggest problem we thought it's our legal rights when we get married we can have child that's why one day swami very clearly beautifully said unless they pass a course a test exam they should never get babies because every time you get baby you groom them into a adult and bring them to me so he wants a child back he is very clear he wants a child back but amazingly it takes 14 years for you to pre- make adult out of a child so swami is very clear that by 7 years bring them here and then get them into engineers or gurukul why is because he can hold the child in the space of a child and then teach them everything to become possibility then return it to you he like takes it takes care of it because you know you, you should not spoil it and then returns it to you as beautiful as possible see this is what he does and how he does that 7 years this is all about the parenting it's so amazing how he interacts yesterday he spent uh, nearly whole day with the children so close sitting like uh, as close as you are sitting with the padukas now he was sitting like that and talking to the kids and uh, grooming them it's so casual and so beautiful trying to understand their names new names and ch- chit chatting and making jokes with them and telling them the possibility see what would we do if we have a class of kids vidyalaya you would take the love topic and talk about overflowing love right that's what I, marvit also does but how he was doing marvit was so surprised he was not talking about anything but he was talking the possibility that even we won't even think of he will casually joke and play and everything in the middle of the conversation there'll be like extolling statements like see you guys have to learn everything it's not that you have to learn just flute and just uh, construction you have to take up everything and know everything that's all it's very simple and they are also yes mommy ji immediate respond to the 100% listening see if they have 100% listening that means they are going to become one we don't listen also and we don't talk also so it was so beautiful how he takes children classes we have to really learn now how to take this vidyalaya classes where listening will happen they are very good in listening i don't say no they listen to lot of things but we don't keep that space open we really shut it down the minute they enter the class what we do is when we call them 
they also are very curious to know what you want to talk and they come and sit next to you and all that but most often what we do is we shut them down by asking questions we ask them a lot of the things repeated now you tell me what i told you so many things we keep intruding to their space they just shut down they say this is not what i want <laughs> if i come to her she'll ask me questions so i'm not interested in to go anywhere else this is the adult world i don't want it immediately they start shutting down that same thing you have a nice fun games and all that through that for example we are learning about the states and capital so in the states and capital we have a game of cards so when we were playing the game of cards within one week they were learning all the states of india and all the capital a different class what we did is we took the book we drew some diagrams and took the map and all asked them to write states and capital after one week none of the kids no states and capital except up to like 5 or 6 maximum 10 they learned one class learned all the states and capital one class just learned four or five and the teacher was saying like this is the portion we could cover i said what did you do she said i taught them very sincerely i prepared everything i uh, stuck lot of pictures on it on the map and they saw how i stuck and they didn't do anything i was doing everything and i showed them and repeated 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 every day that they learned they learned four or five but this other teacher was playing with them card games and through the card games they were playing a simple card collecting all the matching cards that is state and capital and finally at the end of the week every state and capital was known by a kid see all they want is to be in their space and learn the world but all what we do is we bring pull them to our space and tell them see i am an intellectual i know everything and you better sit and learn here when we get into the space of adult they shut down to us they listen the first few minutes and then shut down of course that's why they can answer at least few question but it's very hard if we start grooming initially at least 7 8 years they'll be very sharp but when they become like 10 and 12 they become lethargic they feel bored and tired of these adults they lose the interest for learning that's the danger to their life if they get bored to learning that means they are shutting down life happening to them it's not they are shutting down physics chemistry when they become lazy they are making all the doors close for them now they are going to have a deep depression happening them when they become 18 or 21 it will not show up at 15 15 they only not listen to you always sit around eat watch tv or play computer but when they are 18 it becomes real problem then they start searching for other partners searching for drugs searching of porno sites something to satisfy their space and they don't understand why they have landed up like this but we are the reasons who started at the age of 8 and 10 to make it that way slowly laziness if you see all the secondary kids they'll be so lazy that pattern of laziness sets in a child the child is gone doomed you are packed and labeled you can label them as adults because a child can never be lazy they are so active you should get irritated by their activity because they are so much in bliss and jumping 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 around it's like wow the minute they set settle down in the laziness they have given up on life or oh, life doesn't give us any space for us to expand for us to be who we want life only ask us to do what life wants always this mummy says i have to be like this i have to do like this i cannot be creative and creative also in the way she understands how i should be creative in the very logical world i have to live in a logical world i am all alone i don't have anybody you ask any teen your teen kids marvid asked one of the kid uh are you feeling left out alone and all that he said yes i feel left out i feel alone how do you know 
he was amazed that how i know i said don't worry everybody goes through this this is exact time you start becoming adult you give up on yourself you give up on others that you can be who you are that is exact time you can really catch the moments of them happening that and after that they become a lazy but they don't do anything in life then we kick them give them a whack with give them a shouting and every day we have to shout for them to get up and do anything but what has caused that is because we were always jumping from our space we never saw a space lies in the space of a child okay describing all this first time marvel is going to talk about the first part 